Hello, my name is Jitu Abraham and in this video I'd like to show you the many powerful tools available on the RTO to do EMI debugging. So here I've got a, uh, a board that I'm using to actually look at uh, the signals and I've got a near field probe that I can use to walk around the board and find signals that might be of interest. Now as you can see uh, we've got different uh, lengths of the magnetic fields uh, or loops if you may and we can walk this around the board and we can see immediately in the time domain we can see different effects and so on. So as I walk across different portions of the board either very high signals come up, high disturbances or so on or if I move towards the power supply I get different kinds of um, responses if you may uh, on the trace. Now, uh, one thing is to actually look at this in, in, in the time domain, but a much more powerful method of doing this kind of exercise would be to put the RTO into a frequency domain, so an FFT analysis, if you may. So here on the RTO, you can select the FFT, and on the sidebar, you can choose a, a start and a stop frequency. So for my exercise here, I'm going to go to a stop frequency of about, about 500 megahertz. And then I'm going to select the channel that I need and immediately there you see the time domain capture and also the FFT domain that we can see at the bottom there. And as I move this around the board you can see all kinds of artifacts jump up and we really see the, the frequency content of each of those disturbances that are there. And uh, I, I noticed there is a problem that came up in a far field measurement around the, um, the, the, the actual display here. And as we move around here, we can actually see there's there's lots of um, there's lots of little signals there, but there's a, a spur that comes up every so often just around there uh, that is causing us an issue. So how can we actually debug this? How can we actually try and find out where that content is coming from or how frequent it is? The best way on the FFT is to use what we call as a mass test. So on the uh, on the RTO, you have the mass utility there and then as we move this around I can actually freely define a mask on the trace here select a few points there as a violation for example and as soon as I, I move my my um, signal to the to to an area you can start to see that it starts to violate that 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 mask now to actually capture that error and how frequent that is or so on what you can do is under the mass definition you can actually say in the events and actions tab to actually stop on a violation so here you can go into stop on a violation and as soon as I walk my probe around you can see I'm, I'm going to move it all around here and I can actually see that's actually failed and uh, once more just just to, uh, so you can actually see that a bit more better you can actually see there I've actually caught the error that's actually causing me the biggest issue if you may. Now uh, we've now got this in, 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 in the capture in memory if you like and we can actually see in the time domain as well there's a bursted signal that that's that's actually been captured and what's nice is with the FFT you can also configure so right now the FFT is actually uh, performed over the entire range in in time but now we can actually use a gated FFT so here under the FFT settings we have a gate function so once we say use gate then we're actually using a portion of the signal if you may and you can actually freely define where the start and stop of that signal should be so once I define a window for example I can move that window around I'm just going to further make this smaller so we can actually look at that signal and then you can see there that's my spur when I go into the sort of the off time when there is no burst we see that it's completely clean and doesn't violate the mask at all so we we can further correlate and find out yes that's definitely what's causing the error try and find out what that frequency of that signal is and try and correlate it with the board and see if that is what is causing the issue so that's a, an example of how to perform EMI debugging. You can then further use different kinds of probes, if you may, with different lengths. So go down to the PCB trace lengths, if you like, and try and find out and hone in to the signals that might be causing signal integrity issues or EMI issues for that matter. 